Welcome to today's video. Today's video won the Twitter poll for the top video that everyone wanted to see and that was regarding Eco Homes. So today we're going to be talking with Dean Fielding of Eco Homes about his Eco Home project. Now most people will know Dean as EcoPluck, but that's not Dean's background. Dean's background is construction. Your construction company is Keystone Developments. Yeah. How long have you been in this, the building game? When did you build your first house, Dean? First house I built, I was 17, but I've kind of grown up with construction. My dad was a bricklayer. We built extensions on the house every year until the point that I was about seven years old and asked my dad why we weren't building an extension this year because I didn't realise that it wasn't normal to build an extension every year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've kind of, from a very small age, lifting bricks in a bucket and hoisting them up scaffolding I've, I've lived and breathed construction. My first job at 16 was a quantity surveyor for a large construction company. I soon wanted to set my own business up, which I did. Built my first house when I was 17, and it's grown and grown from there. Obviously, as you all know, I'm quite an eco-warrior. Yeah. The construction business now, it does uh, specialises in historic and listed buildings, so working with a lot of natural old materials, historic construction methods, which are inherently quite eco-friendly. Okay. Very interesting work. I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess um, from the Keystone development in, in sort of the, the construction industry, that's, you, you've sort of seen how dirty the building construction system is. Absolutely, yeah. Is, yep. is that what's inspired you to, to, to make an eco-friendly home? Yeah, yeah. So I think that we can do better. Over here, we have got a very expensive model of a very, very large home. But this isn't your sole purpose of building. You're not just going to build very expensive homes. I believe you're also going to be building houses for basically anyone who's got a plot of land that wants an eco home. I presume yeah. you'll build a two, three, you know, bedroom house basically to, to whatever someone wants, but using your eco values in this. Absolutely, yeah. So to start the business off, it's a startup company. We need to appeal to people who can afford the high, more, more expensive houses. This will prove the concept, but then once we've got a few of these first few through the system, we can then look at the end goal, solving the housing crisis, going down the route of manufacturing houses, which will be more efficient, getting the cost down. And ultimately, end users will find that houses are more affordable from an initial purchase price point of view and from an ongoing maintenance and running costs. Now, from the houses that you have built of this size in the past, as, as you're on your non-eco side, yeah. what do you think... I mean, obviously tying into your old job as a quantity surveyor, what do we reckon the cost difference between building a non-eco house project and an eco house project will be in, we're not talking about, we're not talking about savings of cost here because I'm Dean loves, okay. Dean loves numbers. I like numbers. In physical cost to build the home, not talking about any savings, what is the difference between an eco house and a non-eco house? So for a house that looked the same as this, yeah. I'd say there's about 10% difference. Okay. Now, 10% difference, what do we think the payback on that 10% would be roughly calculated on building the Eco House project through the solar savings, um, water savings, and other things that we're gonna go into in this video? Uh, about 15 years. Okay. So, relatively quick, considering the house is hopefully gonna be around for a few hundred. Yes. There are other things to consider, though. Now, that is comparing an off-the-shelf circa £600,000 build cost for a large house like this. Although I say this is 10% more, this actually could be much cheaper than an equivalent house. The reason being, we've already done all the drawings, the design, we're kind of just tweaking things. It's not like a lot of the projects where you see on Grand Designs where client wants a house, they spend a fortune with an architect, they then spend a fortune with a builder and all weird and wonderful stuff that's never been done before. This is all tried and tested stuff. You said there's four key points on building a new eco home. Number one was the aesthetics, I believe. Absolutely. A point that I fully agree on. Now, I said to Dean, Dean has asked me why I bought my house where I live. And the reason I bought my house when I saw it was it was the most attractive looking house I could, I could, I like pretty picturesque houses. A lot of the houses that I believe are being built today are not built for what I like to call curbside appeal. They're not built no. to be aesthetically pleasing. They're built to do a job and to fit yeah. into a space. Could do better. Yeah, so that is one of your ethos is about eco homes, isn't it? Yeah, it's not difficult. A lot of the houses, simple things like symmetry, getting all the proportions correct, 
it is really important. The reason we've gone with this design, it's quite simple really, but I've put a lot of thought into it, is that if you go into any village anywhere in the UK, usually the most expensive and most desirable house in the village is something like an old vicarage that's been around for 400 years yeah. or a Georgian manor house, something that looks similar to this. It's the sort of place that you just walk past and the garden and everything's fantastic. You just look and think, wow, that's nice. I'd like to live there. Yeah, I mean, it's the sort of house that if you ask your child to draw a house, yeah, it's the, the house that comes to mind. Yeah, it's kind of... Symmetry, perfect, symmetry. good-looking house. Pretty-looking house. Dean's second point about eco-homes yep. is sustainability. Yeah, and absolutely. And that the products that you use have to be sustainable. So I can take a random guess that some of the sustainable things that you're talking about are readily available, but just not currently used by current builders. That's right, yeah. Uh, for various reasons. Mostly because they always have... I don't actually question changing things and doing things differently and don't really think innovatively about the way that they do stuff. So, as I'm sure you've probably all heard, that the construction industry itself is, on its own, one of the largest contributors to climate change emissions. Uh, so, we look to solve that with the Keystone Future Homes. Um, the way that we can do that is, in the construction process, we're making this house so that its net carbon emissions are zero. We're actually hoping to go better than zero in that there's so much timber used in the house, we'll actually be locking more CO2 into the house than the total emissions used to create the house in okay. the first place. Okay, so I'm going to presume you're using timber frames? Correct, yeah. Okay, now a lot of a lot of people who are not in the building game yeah. will... First of all, go, oh, timber frames, that's a cheap build. Mm, well, no, it's not, th actually. Right, this is why yeah. I'm mentioning it, because for someone from the building construction, timber frame, I presume, is actually a better way of building a home. For one, it's normally not cheaper. <laughs> for two, it's thermally better. We're also going for a, something called a low thermal mass on this house, which means that you can heat it up and cool it down quickly. It doesn't have tons and tons of concrete, so there's no cement in this house at all. Cement uses huge, huge quantities of fossil fuels to heat it and for the manufacturing process. I'm, it's I'm, I'm also it's imagine, dirty stuff. I'm also imagining it uses a hell of a lot of water. Yes, yeah. Huge amounts of water, huge amounts of fossil fuels, very energy intensive. So we're going with um, alternative construction methods, which are also quite traditional uh, construction methods and also use locally available materials as well. So I, I presume instead of, I've got a little sample here, which is instead of mortar, normal mortar, Yeah. what is this stuff, Dean? So this is lime mortar, which has been used on historic and listed buildings for centuries. One of my favorite mottos, just because something's old, doesn't mean it's not any good. This lime mortar is actually better for the stone. It allows it to breathe, it's slightly softer, more flexible, and aesthetically as well. It also mellows and blends in nicely with the natural stone, of which we've got another sample here. The colours mellow better. You don't get the hard, heavy, gray, dark grey cement look. And, and, is, and is there a reason why they don't use this anymore in traditional construction? Not really. Not in my opinion, anyway. Is, I it, think is it harder to work with? or It's different to work with. Okay. But to um, an experienced bricklayer... I'd argue there's points about it that are actually better. Definitely looks nicer. Yeah, it behaves completely differently, but it looks looks nicer, more sustainable. It actually sets by absorbing the CO2 uh, out of the atmosphere to harden. So yeah, there's CO2 emitted from it when you make it, but it locks it back in as it sets. Right. Effectively. So that it's carbon neutral? If you can use <laughs> renewables for the manufacturing process, which theoretically you could, then yeah. Another point Dean has about the construction of a new build home is obviously a lot of new build homes now, which I find ridiculous, and not the building roof space, but they're not putting any solar panels. No in. solar panels. Yeah, I knew what you were going to say then. Um, so there was a target by the government to make um, Code Six building rigs compliant homes by 2016, which they conveniently shelved and are continuing to do fracking and now I'm gonna burning guess, gas and putting boilers in and now without being rude kicking to the you, can down the road. Yeah, well without being rude to your industry, 
The building industry in this country is a bit like the oil industry in America, as in lobbyists. And I'm presuming that the building firms lobbied the government on the solar being installed on new build homes. They said it was too expensive. Right. Uh, I beg to differ, because if you're going to put a roof on there, you might as well put a solar roof on there, because you don't have to put a traditional roof on first, and then solar panels on the top. You could do it as built-in PV, uh, which is what we intend to do on here. So, I mean, so obviously there is two ways of building solar in a, in a house. So I'm going to presume there is missing a couple of the slates out and putting panels in that way. Yeah. That, that's one you're saving on slates. You are? Yeah. There's it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's not quite as aesthetically pleasing. No. So the... But, but, but we're talking as a broad spectrum at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's, let, let's, let's move away from this lovely aesthetically okay. pleasing image Fine. that you've got. We're talking, let, let's try and help other people who may not be ready to afford one of your homes, but might be building their own self-build. You could build the panels into the roof, sunk into the roof, Yes. And that would save money on slates, and also you'd have some solar panels. Yeah. Now, there's the method that EcoHomes is using, which, yeah. let's be honest, if no one's figured out there is zero solar panels on this roof, there's a reason for that, isn't there, Dean? Yeah, that's because the roof is the solar panels, Tesla solar slates. We've got one of the reservations for the first in the UK to use a solar slate roof. First few eco homes will, could be the first few people to have solar roofs. That's right, yeah. Test the solar roofs in this um, country. Yeah, it's basically like a hologram in the slate. So when you stood down on ground level and look up, it looks like a nice French slate roof. Or, But then when you tilt the, the, the panel, it, you see it, the actual yes. solar so, cell. So from the ground point of view, it's a roof. It just but looks like from a normal the roof. sun point of view, it, it's, it's a bit panels. like those old fashioned kids toys where you used to flip the image and you used to see it move i mean there's one point i've just noticed about your roof mm -hmm. the pitch is very high it is yeah so is there, is there a reason behind well, there's a high pitch there is a reason behind that one of my pet hates on grand designs i mean grand designs is okay but there are a few things that really annoy me and one of them is when they go okay so we've decided to put solar panels on this house and we've had a university study tell us that the optimum angle for solar panels in this area of the UK is 33.5 degrees, perfectly south facing. Which they put them on there and it generates power and that generates the most power over a 12 month period, which on paper is technically correct. However, there's a slight problem with that in that the shallow 33 degree angle for the solar panels is designed to aim at the sun when it's highest in the sky when there's the most sun. It kind of makes sense to optimize the most generation over a 12 month period. However, that's not actually what you want. The reason is that you're designing the whole system to generate the most amount of power in the middle of the day, in the middle of summer, which is precisely when it's least needed. Right. Yeah, does that make sense? Because you're not in. Because you're not in and it's sunny and it's when in the middle of summer when the demand is lowest. We've actually gone with two different pitches on the different elevations, and we've not gone with south only. For example, on the rear of the house, 40 degree pitch on the south elevation, so that it's a bit steeper. So yes, you miss out on slightly some of the, um, the highest amount of uh, sun in the summer, but that's when you'd be generating so much surplus that you wouldn't need it anyway. It'd be wasted, so we've gone with you know, bit bit higher pitch, so that when the sun is lower in the sky, you're still generating a decent amount of electricity throughout more of the year, which is also when it's more needed in the winter, when demand is higher. We've also added an east and west array. The idea of this is to work with the grid's natural peaks and troughs. Correct. And balance out when the solar energy is actually needed, yeah. rather than when the solar is more abundant. Correct. So if you've got a south-facing array, you'll know that, especially in the summer, the sun rises sort of northeast and can be on the east gable of your house for three hours in the morning and your south-facing array is doing sort of 40 or 50 watts right. until nine o'clock and then the sun comes onto the south array, which is when you've gone to work. Which is too late. Which is too late. So I, I, I'm presuming that if you're, if you're plugging into a solar diverted charger for your electric car, yeah. that really, the last roof you want to get generate from is this one. The first roof you're going to generate off is this one. Correct. Because it's when in the morning yeah. when you're waking up. And these are also a steeper pitch. And so then these I, are fifty degree because the sun's lower in the sky so then in the I'm morning. I'm assuming and the this this roof is when you get home. 
Yeah, absolutely. Which so, is when you get home plugging in and you want some charge. Yeah, and you come home, put kettle on. I, I know we've talked about this before, but the idea of your eco home and solar and battery storage system in this, you don't want to pull any electricity from the grid, I believe. No. So um, at least 75% of the year, this is capable of being completely off grid and generating enough surplus electricity to run two battery electric okay. vehicles. I have a question. Yes. At home this size, you're going to have at least two electric cars. Yes. How are you going to do that without importing? So we've got these solar panels on here. There's a total of 21 kilowatts. Although we've lost a little bit on the south array, this surface area here, because we've got such a much larger surface area on the east and west pitch, that more than offsets any difference. Um, so we generate far more electricity in with this arrangement, which means that we've got the, the house is so efficient, doesn't use much electricity, it's ground source heat pumps, um, ventilation heat recovery systems as well. The chimneys are, are not for burning anything because we don't burn stuff in this All house. Right. So, so the, the, these chimneys are not for a, a, a log fire, for example. No. These are for the ventilation heat recovery system. So, okay. so really, these chimneys are mainly there for aesthetical purposes. Aesthetics yeah. and repurposed for the ventilation system. Right. So it's going to have like uh, full um, filtration on the house. So you can get rid of all the nasty PM2.5 particles, positive pressure inside so you're not sucking cold, dirty air in. So this positive pressure in the house, I'm, I'm going to assume from um, a cleaning point of view, means there's going to be less dust. There'll be less dust, yeah. Less dusting to do. Um, and just mean that we've got all well, we've just clean, found cleaner, just, cleaner air, asthma just, sufferers. I've just found a, another extra benefit of the eco home. Cool. Um, you're going to be resulting in less chemicals being used to clean your home. Yeah, this is true. Less dusty. This is true. Less plastics from your microfiber cloths. Less dusting. Yeah. You should D get a job for us, Nick. Dean never thought of this one. You see. No. Uh, see. No. <laughs> Apart from the solar panels, uh, the Havoc heat system, the ground source heat pump what other things are different on your eco host project compared to just someone putting a heat source pump is there anything different in the construction so yeah we've thought about the construction of the house you know obviously blank canvas it's not like we've just crashed a satellite on the roof like it looks like some of them where they just stick solar panels on or stuck things on here and there. The whole house has got features that are basically fully integrated into the house. You can't see them and they work better okay. and they take up less space. The The whole house is fully integrated with a technology that we've developed, it uses different elevations to pull the air through the cavity so that you can either cool or heat the air going through the ventilation system using the natural heat that's stored in the walls. One of the worst things you can do on an eco house is precisely what a lot of eco houses do, and that's put acres of glass on there. Now, yes, you can get solar gains. Yes, it's nice, you've got nice views. However, you can't get away from the basic physics that you lose around nine times more heat per square meter of glass than you do through an equivalent wall. Um, so if you want to hold on to heat, the last thing you want to do is have a, a wall of glass. I'm going to assume then that is why the side of the houses have no windows. Uh, no, that's actually a mistake. They have got some windows. That should have some windows because it looks a bit ugly without windows. Oh, so that's that's a mistake from... That's a mistake on the model. On the model. We should have put some windows on there. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up because I always thought that was a thermal reason. Well, thermally, it would be excellent. <laughs> but but thermally, but on the model, it is wrong. It might be a bit dark. We're working on a design that involves some sun cones. Sun cones? Cone. 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 So that's a special word. Yeah. Uh, and basically, it's um, an acrylic cone. So as the sun hits it at any angle, uh, it's similar to a fiber optic cable that fires down a fiber optic cable into the house. And you basically flip a switch and you get natural daylight which comes pouring in uh, through. You can actually run them through uh, chandeliers and light fittings. How do I afford one of these? Well, at the moment, that would be very difficult. Um, the traditional self-build to do, like you see on Grand Designs, 
you would need to buy a plot of land for a house like this, a large plot in a nice area, you're looking around 200 to 250,000 pounds. The mortgage system at the moment means that you'd have to buy the site outright, unencumbered, so you'd need 250,000 pounds in cash to buy the site. You would then need to put 30% of the build cost in up front, so around £600,000 to build a house like this. How, how are you going to do this differently? We've looked at a way of solving this problem and we've got a financial solution in place. If you came to me and said, Dean, found a fantastic site, I'd love to live there and I'd really love to build an eco house on there. Okay. I could go, right, okay, we'll look, do the initial searches, feasibility, is it eligible for planning? We would then look at the land cost. Yep. Look at the build cost. Yeah. Take a ten percent deposit from you. Okay. So, so very normal sort of housing. Just like sort of, yeah. Yeah. Just like a buying, house, yeah. buying a normal house with a normal mortgage. Once we take that ten percent deposit, Keystone Future Homes would buy the site, build the house out completely. Okay. To this point where it's completely fully decorated, sparkle cleaned like a show home. Okay. At which point you get a normal mortgage on it, and move in. So, what you're telling me is. With a 10% deposit, yeah. you'll build me a normal, I can have a normal mortgage. I don't need any special self-cert mortgages. No. Um, you, you can just get a normal mortgage on so, it and move in. So you only so, need to so straight, so straight away off that, I can tell you the APR interest rate will be lower on the mortgage. Yeah. The self-cert mortgages have a higher rate. Yeah. Um, the the, the it, cost of entry is a lot lower, Yeah. And which means it's more affordable. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and it, it works for all of us. So, we've got a 10% deposit, so there's a bit of security for us if you came out of the deal and we've stuck with the site with a half built house on it. Yeah. Um, you've got the advantage of the much lower uh, barrier to entry. And you've also got the advantage that because we know what this is costing, we're a one stop shop, we know the end costs, we've got our margin built in the actual build costs. So, if you were to buy a site in a nice area, it was 250,000 for the site, 590,000 for the build cost. You've got a total cost there of 840,000 pounds. That house could be worth a million pounds. Yeah. Traditionally, a developer would build that house if they could get a million pounds for it and sell it to you for a million pounds, yes. they would do. So what you're actually, not, not only are you building a house for a lower entry point, you're, you, it, if you, if someone wanted to pay you to build five or six of these on plots of lands they have, they're also um, got the opportunity to make some money. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dean. Yeah, thank you, Nick. If you are interested in contacting Dean for an eco home, his numbers and details are down below. If you uh, end up going any further with Dean, then please let me know. I'd love to film the first site of groundbreaking. It would Thanks make a nice much. time lapse. It would, it would make a great time lapse. You see, there you go. That's what you can't forget to do when you yep. build when You'll you get a one. free time lapse video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, click down below, click subscribe, check out my other videos. Thank you very much for watching this week's video, and thank I'll you. see you again next week. Thank you.